Hey, welcome back, everyone. It's time for another exciting episode of Measuring Dev Skills with Code Signal. It's me, your friend Pat, and today I'm joined by uh, our friend Albert. Albert is a senior software engineer here at Code Signal, and his primary focus is actually to make the IDE great. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, Albert, welcome to the show. Thanks, Pat. Great to be here. Uh, I feel the same way. So basically, if I'm a tech lead, I'm thinking about introducing this new product. I don't want it to be something that my whole team needs to learn something new for. I want it to be natural for them. So today I was thinking we'd sort of go through the IDE and look at some of the features that sort of make it comfortable, natural, uh, and accessible for any new users. That's great. Okay, so here we are in our IDE window. This is basically just a popular algorithmic task that we've selected. So I was thinking today we could sort of look at some of the ways that our IDE is smart, customizable, and familiar. Uh, maybe we could start with the ways that this can be customized in case a user has specific preferences or something like that. Uh, so how could we customize this? Uh, yeah, it's designed to be uh, to provide great experience for all types of developers. And normally, different developers prefer different teams, uh, different key bindings. So in the ad ID settings, there are different options to have great experience. One of the common things is to change the team. For example, right now it's Monokai, which is very similar to Sublime uh, Editor for for desktop. Uh, but you can select, for example, VS Code Dark, which is very similar to the actual VS Code team. Uh, and this, since it's the most popular IDE for developers, uh, they don't get confused. It's all the same, so they have a great experience normally. Uh, nice and familiar to someone who's used to VS Code, which, I mean, it's a pretty popular IDE, so. Uh, there's, cool. There's also like the Dark team, uh, it's more like a, like a code signal preferred team uh, uh, with accessibility and all those um, cool things. But all the teams are meant to be uh, providing great experience dep depending on preferences. Perfect. Well, I'll just set it to VSC dark for now. And I'm noticing that when I switch this up, uh, it sort of affects everything, not just the actual coding window. So nice to see that kind of consistency. Oh, whoops, almost switched my editor there. <laughs> that could have been awkward. Uh, and I see that there are lots of other uh, sort of toggles here, things that we could activate or deactivate depending on our preferences. Yeah, you can, uh... On the top, you can change the editor mode. For example, if you uh, normally use Veeam or Emacs, uh, you can do that too. Uh, it will change the key binding so that it's more familiar for you. Uh, you can turn off anything you want. For example, the auto completion in general, uh, auto brackets, the mini map in the right. Uh, oh yeah, there it goes. Uh, the error highlighting, for example, if you don't want, don't want the linter errors or compilation errors to show you real time. Uh, yeah, and it provides the shortcuts for you uh, to, to run everything uh, in a faster way. Nice. Yeah, nice and simple. Uh, it's nice when everything is sort of at your fingertips, right? You don't have to stop and mouse over to run tests or something like that. Um, so we talked about some features in there, like auto completing, error highlighting. Maybe we should take a look at uh, at some of those. So, like for example, just adding to the code that we see over here. Uh, if I start writing uh, something like accounts, then it's going to use this as a suggestion. I mean, there are a lot of other things that uh, it's suggesting here as well. Uh, if I were to do like math, for example, I'd have a lot of options here. Uh, and I also noticed that, uh, or actually, sorry, I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say, I, I noticed that if I hover these, I get more info, but that's not actually here, right? Is that? Yeah, yeah yes, you need to. That's what I was uh, you can see the definition when even you're typing. Uh, to see what each function does. Uh, you can see that uh, it's real in real time provides your compilation errors. For example, return is highlighted because uh, this is not a proper syntax for, for Java. Uh, so it even gives you that you need to do some changes so that in real time, you will know that your code is correct or your code is not correct. You don't have to run every single time you do uh, code changes. And when you hover over something, uh, you can see the definition of that class or uh, 
some documentation uh, for some specific libraries. Cool. So then I'm just wondering, I mean, Java, as I understand, is a compiled language, uh, whereas you're giving us this sort of real-time error reporting. I mean, was that a difficult thing to implement or? Yeah, the difficult part is that, uh, you know, for when you are working on a desktop ID, it all, it's all in your machine. So it can run uh, uh, processes and it will connect those processes with your ID and you eventually will have all of that but you can't do the same here because it's in browser. So you can't compile your C++ or Java code in the browser. So you need some fast way to have those compilation errors, for example, or auto suggestions from somewhere from a server. And that's exactly how it works. So on the servers, uh, there are some processes for language uh, that, that are language specific. They are called, uh, uh, they're called language servers. Uh, each language has its own language server that is implemented uh, using that language or some of that variations. And it essentially provides uh, you an API, uh, a process with standard input and output uh, to control all those suggestions. And we just connect uh, that information uh, with the client side uh, visualization over the WebSocket so that when you type something, uh, it produces something in the backend. And that result is being shown here once we get what we should suggest, for example. Cool. So basically through WebSockets, this would be connecting to a Java language server and allowing us to get that real-time error reporting. And that, that's a lot of behind the scenes stuff to, to make this a nice, seamless, comfortable experience. So yeah, nice job. So Albert, at this point, I'm wondering, is there a way I could find all the features that the IDE supports? Yeah, well, basically since it's uh, the browser-based version of VS Code, uh, you can press F1 and all the key bindings are the same or the shortcuts are the same. And here you can find all those popular VS Code commands uh, and even their shortcuts that you can use in our browser-based ID. Perfect. For example, delete a line or something. <laughs> that could be a dangerous one. <laughs> uh, but I think I'm okay. I just deleted a blank line from the end. Uh, okay, cool. Well. I mean, this feels like a lot of power. Uh, this is nice. I feel comfortable using this as a VS Code user. I feel nice and at home. Uh, anything else you wanted to say about the IDE features in general here? Uh, no, I think it's just uh, since I personally use the IDE and uh, I really prefer to have a great ID when I'm interviewing someone or passing an assessment, it's just great to... Uh, build the ID the way that you think it should work uh, in your desktop so that you don't have to spend too much time on figuring out how the ID works. Yeah, makes sense. We wouldn't want it to be a distraction from the thing we're actually trying to measure in the candidate, right? Well, Albert, thanks so much for joining us and uh, showing us how the IDE is really a nice, easy, comfortable experience to introduce for anyone familiar with VS Code or one of these popular IDEs. Thank you. It was great talking to you, Pat. Awesome. Next episode, we'll talk about the terminal and how we can use that to get even more signals out of our candidates.